Hello, this is Crypto CJ. It's the trade of the day, the Monday night Zoom edition, though it's the afternoon uh, due to some scheduling issues. We're on early today. I've had some techni technical difficulties with my internet connection, so please bear with me if, uh, if I glitch out a little bit or we have some trouble loading some screens. Uh, please be patient. So anyway, we'll just get started. Uh, Bitcoin had a nice run up on Friday and Saturday, uh, broke through 24,000, approached 24.5, then got rejected and slid below 23 today and has bounced back up a little bit now. We're uh, 23.2. So um, it would really be nice if, uh, say, 22.5, 23 became the new floor and we could work our way up from there, up past, uh, say, 25, 26K. You know, go up to 28, drop to 24, go up to 32, drop to 28, you know, the drill. So higher highs and higher lows, that's what we're looking for. Let's go to the chart. And this will be a test. Okay, you should be seeing my Bitcoin day chart. Yes. Thank you, Craig, welcome. And I bumped up the zone to uh, 24.5. But as you can see, we didn't close up there. We did drift down below um, 24,000, as I mentioned earlier. So our new range, at least on my chart, is uh, 24.5 on the high side and the 18.8 on the low. So um, like to, looking forward to moving that 18.8 up into the 20,000s, maybe give it another week or so, make sure we have those higher highs and higher lows. On the Ethereum chart, actually has done better. Um, the range here is uh, between 1050 on the low side and 1750 on the high side. Uh, again, the uh, Ethereum punched over 1700 over the weekend, but couldn't hold it. Now it's in the low 1600s. So we've had some good movement in Ethereum and Bitcoin, but um, we have a little bit of a drawback today. Hopefully we'll uh, pump up again later tonight or tomorrow. Any questions about um, the market overall? Just see one article that I thought <laughs> was interesting. I'm excited to see it moving up now, finally. I think we've, as Kevin said, I think we've hit the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that that's the truth. Well, the it's, resistance seems to lay it out that we have are not going to go much lower than where we're at. Or yeah, I think, we you mean, I think you mean support. So. Um, yeah, we're holding down here, and we haven't been down below 20,000, you know, since the 18th. So, actually, that's not right. Um, since the 13th, yeah. So, you know, that's two weeks ago. Hopefully, uh, that's in the distant past, right and but and that support holds. You don't think it's going down to 12? No. Okay. But, you know, and there's a lot of people on YouTube who say, you know, the sky is, you know, the, the, the sky is falling. It's the end of the world. Bitcoin's going to drop down below 10,000. It might happen. You know, anything's possible. But I think it's less than probable. It's about the best I can do on that. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll have our opinions on, on Bitcoin. And, mm -hmm. But yeah, 12, yeah, I don't see that happening but hey there's nothing wrong with putting in a low buy order down there for something to pick up cheap if it, if it does okay CJ, any other cj yes. what i mean looking at it um a bit more objectively what could cause it to go that low now if um if it was i mean you know we've had all the bad news we've had um pretty much everything thrown at it it'd have to be a pretty major event to push it down that low now wouldn't it yeah i agree with craig uh, we talked about this in, in some detail last week on on the friday and monday zooms but you know we've had all the negative uh, economic data you know the mm -hmm. the higher inflation and um you know there was something today about uh you know factory um output something like that that was negative and and you know, the market the interest went... rate. pardon they raised the interest rate as well 
Right, right. Yeah. Uh, the higher interest rates, you know, that was priced in. The market actually went up after that announcement on the, um, last week. So, you know, that kind of economic data is not phased, you know, Bitcoin and, and the, the crypto market. I think it would take, a, you know, a new war or COVID, you know, some hideous new disease or something like that to uh, to drag down the market, you know, to have it drop another 50 percent from where it is now. Um, I'm inclined to think we're at the bottom or near the bottom, but again, nobody can be sure about these things. So as always, only trade with money you can afford to lose. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, any other questions or comments about the market overall before we look at altcoin alert? All righty then. Let's go over here to altcoin alert. And this was a little slow earlier, so I'm going to refresh, look at my AA score. Uh, if you're new, I think I have a couple new people here. I like the uh, altcoin alert, altcoin radar look. I don't care for the dashboard. This, is, this isn't enough information. I want all the information. And the first sort I do is by AA score. I'm looking for 80 or better, uh, very bullish, and we have no candidates today, so that's kind of a bummer. The highest is a 77.9 on Loom, um, which doesn't really appeal to me. So there are some secondary sorts I, I like to do that have actually become some of my primary sorts. And my my favorite, probably in the last few months, is this long-term sentiment. And you can hover over the question mark to get a description of what this is, but it's, it's essentially what people are talking about on Twitter. Uh, you know, what I, I like to think of as, as a word on the street. <laughs> and when you combine that with this one, the Elder Impulse Daily, which is a technical indicator, you know, it's a trend-based, uh, momentum-based uh, indicator, and um, it compares the 20-day signals and the 50-day signals. So when I have people talking about a project and it having good fundamentals, that's something I want to check out more. And... Okay, it's changed. I was looking at Chili's earlier because it's up over 20% today. And it's bullish on the long-term sentiment, bullish on the Elder Impulse Daily. Uh, let's go ahead and check it out since I have the chart up here. All right, uh, we'll start with the day chart and get the big picture. Most of the altcoins have dropped 80 to 90% from their all-time highs. So we had Chili's up in October to like 67 cents, you know, dropped to 86%. Now it's up to about 15 cents. So there's plenty of room for retracement in the, in the really big picture. Um, on the hour, you can see we had the move from a few days ago on the 26th, over 60%, five days, a little bit of a dip. And trying to trying to retrace back up on the five minute, uh, we have a pump. What I'd like to see is a dip sequence. It looks like this. If I click Alt I on my keyboard, yeah, see that's that's a dip sequence. Oh, CJ's cut out. That's good stuff. Okay, my back. Yeah, yeah, you're back. All right, your internet connection is unstable after the fact. Okay, so we had a pump here, but not a dip. I'd rather see a dip sequence here to get in. Um, our distance between the Bollinger Bands looks like it's a squeeze, but it's actually five and a half percent, which isn't bad. <laughs> but we're towards the top of the Bollinger Band, and not where I want to get in on the five minute chart. So it gives us a couple options. We can set a price alert to get in at a better time later. We've got some short-term support here at 14.2, 14.3 cents. And obviously we have quite a bit of support down here around 12.4 cents. So those are the two areas I'd be looking to get in, maybe a small purchase here in case it, it pumps or definitely something down here. Um, and you don't just blindly go in because your alert gets hit. You want to reevaluate after that. If your alert gets hit and it's, you know, free falling, you don't want to catch a knife. So wait till it, you know, finds a 
some support and starts to trend up again, and then then go ahead and get in then if you want. So that's one way to do it. Um, what I prefer to do is uh, use the indicator alerts on the 15 minute chart. And this has my, been my go-to probably the last few months for, for dip trades to, uh, to find those dip trades. <coughs> I've got my divergence, which is what we talked about before is a disagreement between the price action and the indicators. So we have bearish divergence when the price action is up and the indicator is going down. And we have bullish divergence when the price action is going uh, down, but the indicators are going up. So I like this, uh, this tool here. Type in divergence. Let's call it divergence for many indicators, version four. Make sure you get version four, not version three. Um, and then I go ahead and custom customize that a little bit. I think they're they're blue and yellow if you download it. I like green and red, so you can uh, change that on the style section. Um, I'll show you that real quick. Yeah, they, I think this is blue and this is yellow, or vice versa on the on the download. So you can just go in here and change it to what you want if you download this indicator. And then when it goes off, you look at the price action and see if that's something you want to do. As you can see in the recent past of Chili's, you know, most of the bullish indicators or bullish divergences have done pretty well. Um, this one here went down a little bit then came back up. And well, I actually crossed a couple more divergences until it made the big move. So probably wouldn't have stayed in that long, but you know, 5% in, in a day and a half isn't bad. Oh, we lost him again. Ah, bummer. You're back again? I'm back. Okay. So, yeah, if you want to put an alert, an alert on your divergence, you just right click on it, add your alert. Defaults to negative for some reason, but click on positive. Once per bar close, that's important. And then I like to put what sort I used, what, what's my information source for this. So long-term sentiment by is the first one listed because that's the one I use the most. And click that on and I'm click create and I'm good to go. So go ahead and do that one. And then if divergence is if that concept is a little difficult to, to handle, um, you know, RSI and MFI are, are a bit easier. These are popular indicators. RSI is your relative strength index. MFI is your money flow index. There's some overlap, but there's maybe 10 to 20% difference between them. On certain situations, the RSI is going to be more sensitive. Other situations, the MFI is. For dip trades on the 15-minute chart that we're going to apply to the five-minute chart, I like to set an alert down here on the MFI and the 20. Consider, considered oversold, or the RSI and the 30 value, which is considered oversold. Then I like to look at the recent past and see which, which of those alerts would have done well had they been set. And like this one just doesn't quite hit the 20. So some a lot of times in that situation, I'll just set the alert at say 22 instead of 20. I'll show you that in a, in a moment. Okay, so that one, let's say I set that one at 22 and it triggered. Make this a little bit bigger. <coughs> Would have gotten in here. Would have gone sideways for a while and eventually caught this move. Um, this would have been a better entry for that move right about here. And actually, to be candid, I probably would have gotten out here at about 3.5%. And here's a good move, a good dip sequence that uh, this indicator would have picked up. And as you can see, it drops into the oversold area and then, and then trends up. That's the trend I want to catch. Get in right about here, go sideways, and then up. You know, really nice trade in, a, in half a day. So for those kind of alerts, go to your MFI, right click, add an alert on MFI. This is going to be crossing up 
my value is going to be 20. That's the oversold area. I want it to go down and then come back up, retrace. Once per bar close, that's important. And long-term sentiment, that's already there. So that's how you do that. Any questions on chilies? <coughs> All right. CG, real quick, on chilies, real quick on that chart. If okay. I can ask this, um, right where you're showing where 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 it dips down, um, right around twelve cents, you say that we could have gotten in, right around right down there, mm -hmm. but it didn't go through what we've been trained for the one two three dip. So that's that's you know our, my biggest. Where do you know like if it's going down, what's to say it's not going to keep going down? That's a good point. For one, um, the alert I showed you isn't going to trigger until it's trending up from that area. So, um, and I think that goes in line with the one, two, three dip. But w one thing I discovered with this is on the 15 minute chart. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, um, yeah, this occurred yesterday at 5.30 PM. If I go to my five minute chart, mm -hmm. I'll probably see something similar to a, um, to a dip sequence. <laughs> All right, so you can see that it's coming up. Yep. Here, here's your dip sequence on the five-minute chart. It's not a great one. You know, it's one. It's really, it's really sort of a, a single dip. You know, and then across, and then the, right. the indicators go up. So a lot of times you'll see some choppiness here, and then it'll start to go up on your five-minute chart. But the, this is the kind of dip, again, it's not perfect, but it's the kind of thing you're used to seeing on a five minute chart for your one, two, three dip. Does that make gotcha. sense? Yeah, of course. Thanks. So what I found is a little bit of a shortcut is just to use the 15 minute chart and to catch this, this dip and then have it trending back up. And it works maybe 60 to 67% of the time, right around two thirds of the time. And then, <clears throat> If it does what you're concerned about, if it trends up and then drops again, then that's your, if it goes down, you know, depending on how you're doing your money management, you know, five or 10%, and that's when you do your ladder buy or you set a stop loss. So depending on how you like to trade. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Frankie. Any other questions on Chili's? Yeah. I mean, you can set alerts on the five minute chart trying to catch dips and that's that's fine. That's the sort of the price alerts that I described earlier, but I like to do it on the 15 minute chart because I find that by the time that, you know, that's trending above the 20 on the MFI or above the 30 on the RSI, it's usually coming out of that dip sequence and, and, and turning um, in, in my favor. So that's what I like about it. Okay, um, let's see what else we can find. So KCS is only on KuCoin. Um, seller, I traded that before. It's up 11% today, that's pretty good. Uh, we got very bullish on the long-term sentiment, bullish on the Elder Impulse Daily, uh, is worth a look. Divergence for now. Got some old drawings on here. Okay. Okay. Um, in April, we're up to eight and a half cents on seller. Lost 80 plus percent, but it has been trending up lately. Nice move today on the hour chart. Up uh, 44% since the 26th. On the five minute. Yeah, it's um, still shooting up. Too late for this one. But um, again, this is where you would employ your alerts. You've got some support around here at uh, two cents. 
that would be a good price alert. And then that could alert you of a potential dip sequence. Um, could also, if you're a little more aggressive, go here, go here around uh, 2.18 cents. Some uh, support there in case it bounces off that. Say, yeah, if it bounces off that and, and keeps going up, that would be a good entry. And then again, to the 15 minute chart, use your divergence alert. It looks like all the bullish divergences have done pretty well here, except this one, but even that one. Dropped three and a half percent and then shot up. So, yeah, your bullish divergence looks good. Um, MFI looks actually a, a pretty good too. All these entries are are triggering at below twenty, and the RSI. Yeah, that one didn't quite make it to thirty. I've been using the MFI more than the RSI lately. So, but this is a good one here. I don't know if the MFI would have triggered it. Yeah, probably right there. Just a slight dip below. So, but let's say for the sake of variety, we'll do, we'll do an RSI alert, but it looks a lot like the, the ones I've done on the MFI. Crossing up on the 30. Once per bar close, and it's going to be my long term sentiment buy. There we go. Any questions on seller? I think I froze again. Any questions on seller? Okay. No, I'm all good. All right. Nope, good. Let's, since my connection is still kind of twitchy, I'm going to bounce over to um, iCoin Pro. I've had, had several people joined uh, joined up with the uh, the free account over the weekend. So I want to put some, some content out for them. The <clears throat> strategies are similar, but the information source is different. So go ahead and go over to iCoin Pro. And this is the RSI Spy. This is one information source I use. I also like the Buddy Coin Crawler. And since we're here, let's check out the Fear and Greed Index. We're still in fear, but we're up to 39. So uh, a few weeks ago, we were in single digits down here. So we're we're trending back up. That's good to see. It's good to see that we're only in fear instead of like, you know, terrified or whatever the lowest level is. Okay, on the RSI Spy, I usually sort by the one hour RSI. And you've seen me talk about the RSI on the other on the other charts. Looking for values 30 or below. And those tend to be oversold. I've only got two of them right now. I should probably refresh. And they're both Bitcoin pairs. I don't like to trade Bitcoin pairs. I feel like I'm trading two coins. I've done it before, had a little success, but again, it's hard to hard to fathom, hard to teach. So I'm going to ignore the Bitcoin pairs. Unfortunately, there's no way to filter that out and just look at the USDT. Um, I've got some in the low 30s that I think could be worth looking at. We've got uh, this EOS here, 33.42, pretty good volume. These are Binance charts. I trade mostly on Bybit and I do some spot on KuCoin and Coinbase Pro, but um, Usually the, the volume's comparable uh, to uh, what you see on the Binance here. On, on the exchanges, they've got Binance, Binance US, and Coinbase Pro. So if you're trading spot on Coinbase Pro, you should click that. But I don't, I don't do that real often. So I'm going to talk about what I know. And I use, I use mostly Binance charts, even though I don't trade on the platform anymore. So EOS would be one to look at. It's probably the only one that qualifies in this sort. And that's pushing it because it's it's above 30. But since it's open, let's check it out. OK. 
Okay. On the day chart, we're 125. Not that long ago, we were over $3. At the end of March, lost 70% and regained some of that. On the hour, up 35% last four days, and then uh, lost about half of that or so. Five minute. We had that kind of a single big dip and then sideways action that we were looking at um, on seller. It looks like uh, EOS did something similar. That's been trending up the last uh, hour or so. But we're too late to catch a dip. Bollinger bands are really tight, less than 2%. So that's really squeezy, not where I want to get in. Got some support here, about 123. We're pretty close to that already. I might set a price alert down here on 120. Try to catch a dip. Um, otherwise, I'm going to go over to my 15-minute chart. Engage divergence, see what those have done. Um, not bad. This one went sideways and then up. This one was actually a better entry. That's at one in the morning. This one didn't do well at all. None of these did well, really. That's up 1%. Less than 1%. Uh, 1 1.6, you know. Ones and twos are pretty good. Um, if you're on leverage, obviously you can you know, pick up one percent, go 10x leverage, and you know do 10 at do 10 percent if you have the experience and skill to do that. If you're new, you're just starting out, you should stick with spot trades and and trying to get say between one and three percent on iCoin Pro. Um, Allcoin Alert states you should be able to get three percent within 48 to 72 hours on on their recommendations. So generally between the two, I'm looking for, for between two to 4%, maybe five, if I like what I see on the charts. So, um, all right, so on the MFI, that was a good entry. Um, this one, it looks like the MFI is actually giving us better entries than, than the divergences are. So I think that's what I would go with. RSI isn't quite making it down to the oversold area on these on these moves. So yeah, that's the uh, alert I would use. And I've shown it to you a couple of times already, so I won't do it again, but unless you want me to. Um, any questions on any questions on EOS? Okay. Well, that's the RSI SPY. The other one I like is the Buddy Coin Crawler. And it's jargon in the iCoin Pro community to talk about Buddy Coins. These are the three or four or five coins you've chosen at the beginning of the day that you're going to follow throughout the day. Um, and if you're a paid member of this, you can follow the forum. And Justin Clark, the co-creator, will uh, usually do his morning analysis and also reveal, you know, his buddy coins. You know, it's usually three for him. So, you know, this certainly has value. And then some of the other members chime in with what they're looking at. You know, he trades on Coinbase Pro. Some of the members are in foreign jurisdictions. So they can trade on Binance. Um, and they tend to, and they usually put what um, platform they're, they're trading on in their name. So that's helpful. I'm going to get out of that for the moment and go back to the buddy coin crawler. So 
there's a couple of ways you can sort this. This is the average low to the MA, to the SMA, and that's a 24 hour low to the SMA line, which is that pink line between the Bollinger Bands. I'm looking for values of 5% or higher. And um, there's a few candidates here. Uh, they introduced this one. This is the current low to the SMA, which is more recent, but it's more difficult to find larger numbers on this. I've only got three over 5% and they're heard of Hive, but it's actually got some pretty good volume on Binance. Um, we should check that one out, yeah. So it has this handy drop-down menu. I can go to my trading view chart. It'll bring up the last chart I looked at for this particular, um, and then guide me to this particular coin. So it's been a while since I've looked at this one. And this one at the end of November was well above $3. Now it's around 75 cents, 77 cents. Plenty of room to retrace in the big picture. It wasn't doing much till last week. It had a move up 30%, went sideways, and then shot up well over 100% in the last week or so. So that's interesting. But a pretty pretty big drop in the last hour or so. So this is intriguing. It's already started a dip sequence. Uh, we've got definitely a, a, a one dip. And if that's going exact um against Bitcoin. Bitcoin's moving up. If that's going down, then that's doing the opposite. Yeah. Where else can you trade this one? Uh, Bittrex, Huobi, Bitfinex, Gate.io, Coinax. Yeah, I don't know that this is going to be on one that most of us trade on. Yeah, so if you, you know, Craig can trade on Binance if he wants to, being in New Zealand, uh, the rest of us, not so much. So, um, Anyway, this is in a, a single dip now. I'd probably put an alert down here, maybe around 73, 74 cents, try to catch this in a dip sequence. Um, or, you know, you can use the, the 15 minute chart. It really hasn't, it's only dipped below the MFI once in the last couple of days. And then it's like the RSI. Yeah. So it's only had a couple of dips the last uh last couple of days, but the MF the RSI this looks like it, it wants to dip now. And this one just dropped below the 30 and then bounced back up. So I'd probably put a an alert here on the RSI to try to catch this uh if it dips again. So that's gonna be here. Crossing up on the 30 once per bar close, and that's going to be um, Buddy Coin Crawler. Yeah. So there we go. Of course, I just put an alert there. I'm not sure where I'm going to trade this. So <laughs> it, may not be, it may not be a very useful alert for me. All right. Any questions on Hive? Okay, well, I think that's all I'm gonna do today. Uh, my computer's glitched out four or five times in, in, during this, so I don't wanna push my luck. Um, thanks, CJ. I'm, yeah, thanks for everybody for joining. While I'm on, do you have any other questions overall about iCoin Pro or Altcoin Alert or day trading or short-term swing trading in general? I have a question. The eight minute trader, are uh -huh. you gonna be doing anything with that? Maybe. Um, that's outside the scope of, of this show. Okay. Um, but I appreciate your interest in that. And if I move forward with that, I'm thinking of doing something like this with it. But um, I'd want to have some sustained success with that or any any 
platform I joined before I consider, um, you know, talking about it, sharing like like I do with these, where you know, Allcoin Alert and iCoin Pro have a proven track record track record with me, which is why I like talking about them. But but I like where your head's at, Mary. Appreciate it. Well, what, what do you know? <laughs> Jeez, I'd probably want to have a couple months. Okay. And they do so many, you know, webinars on their own anyway that, um, you know, I'm not sure I'd have much to add at this point. Yeah. And that's a whole, totally new new thing for me, what they're doing with it. I've got some different ideas, so we'll see. But um, any other questions about... Um, about trading. I got a chat. All right. Uh, Tom and Carol are saying thank you. Thank you guys for joining me today uh, on this uh, early Monday night Zoom. Uh, if you're in Carbon, I'm going to, we've got the uh, Kevin's webinar at 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, go ahead and click this link, the same link you got here if you want to join that after Kevin's webinar, and we'll talk about what he talked about. So um, if you're watching on the recording, thanks for doing that. Uh, check out the uh, opportunities in the comments below. It helps support the channel. And everyone else, we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>